Joining us right now is the resurgent editor, Eric Erickson, and of course, the man behind the Never Trump campaign. Eric, good to see you. Good morning. What do you make of these polls this morning that basically say people are trusting Donald Trump more so than Hillary Clinton with regard to the issues that are most important to them, Eric? Well, you know, historically, going back to World War II, the only president who was able to keep the White House for a third term to his party was Ronald Reagan. Uh, it, the, the odds are definitely against Hillary Clinton on those avenues because, I mean, Barack Obama's been terrible when it comes to the issues of jobs. He's the only president since World War II who's had an economy that hasn't grown more than 3%, and I think next week we'll find out that it's not growing even close to 3%. Yeah, it's true. Obama has not seen the 3% growth in any year, and that's the first time that's happened, actually on his watch. But I want to ask you about what's happening with Trump and Mitt Romney. We've got new reports that uh, Mitt Romney is now ending his crusade to find an independent right. candidate to take on Donald Trump in this year's election. What about you? You were the mastermind behind the original plot to unseat <laughs> Trump's frontrunner status. You, 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 you came out with the Never Trump campaign and got a lot of support for it. Are you backing off now, given uh, Trump's success? No, not, not giving, back, giving up on it, although we're recognizing that it, trying to get an independent candidate is, is more and more difficult, uh, particularly as you get to the end of May, ballot access becomes a problem. But, I mean, reaching out to delegates, there's still a number of delegates within the Republican Party going to the convention who aren't fans of Donald, but it really is a wait-and-see mode. Uh, does Donald Trump improve on the campaign trail, or does he keep uh, putting his foot in his mouth and sabotaging himself? But look at these polls. It looks like it is improving because now he beats Hillary in these polls. Well, yeah, you know, the New York Times poll came out yesterday and has Hillary with a seven-point lead. Uh, Fox has Hillary or Trump with a three-point lead. Um, I would say that I suspect a lot of it has to do with Trump has been able to consolidate much of the Republican Party to his credit. Hillary's still having trouble getting the nomination, mm -hmm. and, and Trump has consolidated faster than a lot of us, myself included, thought he would with the Republicans. Uh, Eric, it's Jerry Baker from the Wall Street Journal. Um, this is a good point that you raise, and I think this is one of the most interesting points. Have you been surprised by the extent to which Trump has so quickly consolidated Republican Republican support. It is quite striking that you've seen, uh, as you say now, according to these latest polls, 85 to 90 percent of Republicans already saying they will support Donald Trump. Uh, given your own views, given the views of a lot of Republicans, you know, principal views of a lot of Republicans that Trump shouldn't be the nominee. Are you surprised and disappointed that maybe you know the Republican part, the Republican voters as a whole, have very quickly uh, consolidated behind the candidate? You know, I, I always thought most Republicans would consolidate behind the candidate. I, I'm surprised it's happened this fast, uh, primarily because the, the exit polling data throughout the country consistently showed about 30 percent of Republicans saying they wouldn't vote for Trump. Now, uh, this is the dynamic of consolidating while Hillary hasn't. That can still change. But I've always suspected a majority of Republicans would support Trump. And I, I know I'm definitely in the minority in that camp. Eric, it's Dagan McDowell. Hillary Clinton, I believe for the first time, said point blank Donald Trump is not qualified to be the president of the United States. What do you make of that? Well, you know, it's probably the only time I've ever agreed with Hillary, but then I agree with Donald Trump when he says she's completely unfit as well. So um, I think they both are. Um, although, you know, Hillary does have a very difficult burden here because she's going to have to go on whether she wants to or not, claiming the mantle of Barack Obama's presidency. If she distances herself from Barack Obama, his coalition could distance him, itself from her. We've seen repeatedly in campaign 2010 and 2014 that Barack Obama's coalition only turns out for Barack Obama. She's got to give him a reason to turn out. Eric, you, you know, you keep saying, look, she's not fit, he's not fit, they're both not fit. There are two choices here, my friend, right? What are you oh, going to do? I mean, if you, if well, you, yeah. you're pushing back, <laughs> saying that, I mean, you know, and, and I recognize this is an election that is, you know, against. You, you want to vote for one person because you're against the other person. But there are two choices here. Well, you, you know, if you put a gun to my head and said, who would I pick, Hillary or, or Trump, I would probably take the bullet at this point. Is there anything, Eric, that, that Trump could do? I mean, one of the things you hear a lot no. about from, 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 uh, from, Republican, from Republican consultants, Republican pollsters is, look, Hillary's problem is that people don't trust her, and that is an incredibly hard problem to fix. You lose trust, you know, it, it right. takes a lifetime, even in a lifetime, you can't recover it. Trump's problems are more to do with some of the kind of more outrageous things that he said in the course of the campaign, and he can fix that. For you, you just said, you know, essentially, with, you answered Maria, you said you agree with, uh, with, with, with Hillary, and the only thing you agree with her on is that he's unfit to be president. Is there some way in the next couple of months before the conventions or even beyond that that he could change your mind? 
that I, I don't see it, honestly. I, I mean, I think he was unfit before he had the nomination, as did all of the Republican presidential candidates other than Santorum and Huckabee. And I, I just I think it's kind of laughable that one day they all say he's completely unfit and then he gets the nomination. Oh, yeah, we all stand by everything we said about him, but now he's fit for office. I, I don't necessarily think that he is. And maybe he could do something, but I'm not really holding my breath for it. Wow. Eric, real quick, when you said you were going to take the bullet, does that mean you're not going to vote? Hey, you know, I'll probably go vote down ballot. I know there's a Republican pack coming online to get Republicans uh, to go out and vote down ballot, even if they don't want to vote for Trump. And I'll certainly try to get Republicans to go out and vote, at least for the down ballot races. God help us if we lose the Senate. Yeah, you answered my <laughs> question I had. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's true. And that's the, the, that's the, uh, the risk, losing the Senate. Yep. And you think it's a real right. risk, Eric? Yeah, I think it's a very real risk. I mean, first of all, Republicans have more um, seats up for grabs than Democrats, and they're in states that Barack Obama won, including Wisconsin with Ron Johnson. Around the nation, the Republicans are kind of at a disadvantage right now, and we've got a very slim majority in the Senate. So Republicans, whether they want to vote for Donald Trump, myself included, we've got to turn out and vote for Senate races. Eric, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. We'll Take care. We'll be watching Eric Erickson there. Up